Now, how do you lean it up? A psychologist told me that if your screens generate slower than one and seven seconds, in other words, you hit the, the enter button and it takes more than seven seconds to go to the next screen, most people will forget what they were doing if it takes more than seven seconds. Now, I don't know if that's exactly the right number, but what I do know is if the system operates slowly because your network is overloaded, um, that's going to have a, a fattening impact on the CMMS, whether it's lean or not. So here's what I say. Start to time, and, and even have your workers time the process from walking up to a, to a, a computer and entering all the data correctly and walking away. How long does that take? Stop watching. Um, time it. Because I, I'm going to tell you that there's that people complain about the lost time in putting in work orders, but few people actually look at the problem like from an engineering point of view and then work on ways to, to change the engineering so that the process is faster and you get the data that you need. So that's the first um, recommendation is take your stopwatch, take your, your, um, your wristwatch, whatever, and see how long it takes and see how long it takes different people because some people you know may need some some help um, in putting it up putting it in um, the next thing I recommend this is for really leaning up and making the data uh, much much more valuable is to audit your work orders now simply said randomly generate some number of work orders. When I say randomly, like pick random numbers over the last 12 months, uh, 50 of them, 50 closed work orders. Um, and I want you to look at three different parts of the picture. Um, the first part of the picture is the header. Now the header is usually the information that you get before you do the actual work. So this is what comes in from the requester. Now what are we going to be looking for here? We're going to be looking for, you know, is there uh, an asset number which is a good number? Um, like are they asking us to work on something we can work on? Um, who is it requested by? Uh, and then what do they want us to do? You know, what's, what's the thing here? It's uh, PM. But uh, if it's a corrective job, there would be, you know, what's, what work are we looking for? Um, the body of the work order is the, where, where all the real heavy data is. Um, now, there's two questions that I want you to be able to answer from looking at the body of any of your work orders, if they're corrective. Um, the first one is, what was found by the person who went to look at the job? What was actually found? Like, did they find something broken? Did they find something corroded, messed up? What? what? The second thing is, what did they do about what they found? Did they replace it? Did they repair it? Um, those kinds of things. I am going to tell you that, um, I'm going to guess and say 80% of the work orders that I pick up from random places, um, the what was found and what was done is not clear. I mean, in some cases, you can be uh, Sherlock Holmes and uh, figure out what happened. But if you're not Sherlock Holmes, uh, you don't know. And what I'm talking about is not looking at it a day later, but looking at it a year later when people would have forgotten the actual job itself. So uh, typical body of a work order, uh, it's a little bit hard to read on my screen, but gives you the information, um, time spent, how much money, those kind of things. This is the core information and we would look for on another uh, page, we would look for comments and, and things like that. Now. How do you get there once you've done your audit? Um, 
okay, so we've done our audit and we've found some deficiencies. What I tell people is the first thing that I want you to do is I want you to capture work orders that are really egregiously bad, like nasty ones. Um, I want you to capture them and scan them into a format. Um, I want you also to get copies of the really, really good work orders. Um, I want you to uh, sanitize them so that you don't know whose name it is. I mean, it may be obvious from, from other things, but uh, this is not about finding people that are doing it right or wrong. This is about what does it look like to have a good work order, what does it look like to have a bad one. Um, make copies of any code you're using uh, for your training materials. So you do your audit, you find the areas where there's an issue, and then you collect work orders that represents either the issue or the solution to the issue. And then you put that all together, and I just tell people, put it in a PowerPoint um, and have people go through it and look at it and, and see if you can get them to you know, uh, improve the, the type of stuff that they're collecting. Now, another idea. This is a, this is a sneaky, sneaky idea. Um, I'm going to talk in a second about projects that you can do using your data. But what I want to say here is have your senior technicians do some analysis of the work orders and present the findings at your morning toolbox meeting. So uh, let's say we, we ask the uh, senior technician which pump of these pumps you know, is giving us the best service, the best, the highest mean time between failures. We would work with the technician to, to figure, to show them how to do that analysis. So they're not inventing the wheel. Um, but what's going to happen is they're not going to be able to do the analysis in most places because the quality of the data from the work orders is terrible. So what we're this is the sneaky part. We want the senior technician to be frustrated, and then we can have a, a, a discussion about what's needed with the senior technician doing the talking and not uh, staff people or, or engineers or supervisors, but one of the guys is doing or the, one of the people is doing the talking. Now, here's a good question for you. Do your supervisors and your craftspeople have the training, access, and time to use the CMMS? So there's data in the CMMS. Uh, presumably by now you've, you've cleaned up the data, you've made it sound, accurate, and complete so that you can start to rely on what's in there. And now answer the question, um, do people have the training to get into the system? Can they? Uh, if they can't do their queries, can they push a button and get a pre-designed query that was designed for them? Do they have access to the, to the computers to be able to do this? You know, do they have a password? Um, and are they given time and are they specifically told to use the system to look stuff up? So these are the things that is, uh, is important. Now, one of the interesting things is the, um, a lot of times the driver for the quality of the data in the, in the database is management's interest in the data. So here's the question. How important is the CMMS database viewed by management? Is it viewed as like, uh, you know, mission critical information? Um, you know, like the accounting or finance, or is it viewed as like uh, necessary evil? Um, how often do they use the data in the CMS? Now, I'm not talking about um, using it to run the department day to day. I mean, using the data later to come up with a conclusion. Um, 
is the data ever directly used by technicians? Um, you know, are we uh, uh, are the technicians asking questions and getting answers? Um, the more the technicians use the data, uh, generally the better things, um, the better outcome you'll get.